Jeremy Gardner is an artist who, for the past 30 years, has painted along the Jurassic coast. Well, here I am, standing on Swire Head, the tallest point on the Isle of Purbeck. This particular place has a very, very important person buried here. He was a chieftain and he chose this spot so he could observe his realm. Well, this is my realm, my pictorial realm. I've been walking this coast since I was a boy. My maternal grandfather, Wilf Travers, he used to paint watercolors along this coastline. I used to see his watercolors hanging on my grandmother's wall, pictures of Old Harry Rock's Swanage Bay. Jeremy will guide us on a journey where we will meet a fisherman and a quarryman. He will lead us to the land, sea and earth below. My granny used to live in Swanage, so I was always taking marsh boat rides around the coast. When I was first born, I got brought down onto the keel and I was, as soon as I could start remembering things. My uncle Reg was the one that did boat trip and he used to have a boat called the Laurel Leaf which used to do the sightseeing trips out of the cliffs. And when I got to about the age of 10 or 11, I managed to get hold of a couple of lobster pots. So I used to go on out there in a dinghy and I used to catch a few lobsters and I used to sell them to people up on the shore and that would give me my pocket money for the week. And nowadays I've got my own fishing boat. I left school, started working for my father when I was about 17. My father had a masonry business, but he was quarrying his own stone and cutting it. In pursuing other veins of stone, I've broken into these old workings where, where we are. This is Dang's vein, and probably of late 18th, early 19th century date of operation. They tell me you work with one candle when you're getting stone out. The first task is to underpick it. You begin to attack the massive layer of rock by splitting the top one, sliding it out onto your little low part. This is Dan's vein. Tends to split, use a great deal for paving before mechanised sawing of this stuff. These men produce paving by splitting the blocks and then chiselling them smooth. Because Paul's going by here, look. Bobby, you caught? Is that the only one you had? Yeah, I've been getting some big hem ones up, yeah. Paul used to be a quarryman. It's DMP level quarries it used to be, now it's DMP fisheries, isn't it? <laughs> All right, I'll see you later. The landscape paintings begin outside in the wind and weather. It's very important to be connected to the environment, the changes in atmosphere and light. I've been returning to places where the land, sea and sky meet. Then we have to cross Old Harry Tide Race here and the east wind when the tide is going out on Old Harry Ledge here it can be quite a dangerous place, quite a spiteful place and it's made, me, made my heart drop a few times coming down over there because it's too dangerous out here for a little boat. Normally you get one or two waves crash over the front of the boat when you're going down over these tide races, but I had about four or five one day. And in the end, the water was getting up around the engine. Yeah, I had to get my bucket out at the end and start bucketing the water out of the boat. And then the boat was starting to wallow. I thought I was going to go down for a minute. We've deliberately put a block here with a sword side to it to demonstrate the technology. <laughs> If you come around another step, can you? Look out through this way. But there, you've got to imagine all the stone being dragged on carts from that direction out to the shaft behind us. What kind of distance have we got now? I mean, or, or is this the end of the... Will you have a look? No, take the trunk. Okay. I haven't got to the extremity because it's collapsed. The thing. On their haunches, pulling, pulling, pulling yeah. the stone out. Yeah. Don't get the impression it's just that little tunnel. They took out a big area. The men that used to quarry that particular mine. They used to risk their life and limb to take out perfect stone, which they would drop down the cliff edge into a barge. 
they'd use a thing called a tilly whim. That history, along with the action of the wind, weather and waves on the rocks, draws me back again and again to this place. Now what fascinates me about this particular spot, the Lulworth Crumple, it's like a layer cake was formed 70 million years ago by the action of tectonic plates colliding into one another and forcing up the rock into an almost vertical orientation. I'm particularly interested in the way those layers represent the passage of time. What does it feel like to stare up at a night sky, to stand on a cliff edge and look out to sea? What I'm trying to do is distill some of that time into these pictures. I think the best way to do that is to build up layers of information, layers of paint. These men here generally were digging their own stone and shaping it to some finished commodity. In this case, 90% paving. Odd big selected stones for tombstones. It's built from local Purbeck limestone, hauled from the quarries nearby. I paint it from a great distance. It's a mark in the landscape left by man. There's graffiti on one of the pediments, and there's a date there, but one from 1665. Human life is transitory. Stuff nowadays going out there catching the fish. It's so powerful and seaworthy that they don't need to stop because of the weather. Because they can work on through the gales, so um, markets are constantly flooded. The depressing realisation for quarrymen is the adage that I heard someone say once, that there's nothing you can do with stone, you can't do better with a concrete block. I've been painting it for 30 years, and as I return to paint it again and again, I'm making sense of one small place on the planet and it's helping me distill and make sense of a human time frame. It's a blink of an eye.